I am starting 2021 with this mixed media journal. I have never done an art journal, mixed media journal before. And I thought that in 2021, I would begin and see how I improved and what techniques I learned. I am starting with dendritic printing to utilize that print technique to create a couple of pages in this newly formed journal. If you'd like to hop on over to Facebook, and join my group, Two World Crows Mixed Media. I would love to have you. We are just a group, a small group of people that are inspiring one another and learning from one another. I call my channel Two World Crows Mixed Media. And for those of you that have already subscribed, I genuinely appreciate it. And if you haven't, please do. The notification bell will, of course, let you know when I upload additional content. So to create this page, what I am deciding is if I want to do a horizontal or vertical layout with these dendritic prints. I am printing on pieces of cardstock that I have cut with my paper cutter. And I have cut them in three strips that will fit either vertically or horizontally on the page. So I think I'm going to print both and then we'll make that decision later. I'm starting with a cold gray on a piece of eight by 10 glass. The glass is purchased picture frames that I got from a big box store, the cheapest wood frames that I could buy. I use the outside frame in the making paper video, which I will put a link for that up here. And I use that as my decal and mold to create the paper. I pulled the glass out and I'm using it for the dendritic printing. So I just, put a strip of cold gray on the bottom piece of glass, laid the top piece or the second piece over it, gentle pressure to let that form that dendritic cell or branch-like formation. And now I'm just going to pull that off with this cardstock. And you can see that branch-like formation that the paint creates when smushed together between two pieces of glass. The one thing that I have found that was important to me was to offset those two pieces of glass slightly. So you have a little lip to pull that straight up and avoid moving it side to side and destroying that cell that you have created. So this is what the cold gray looks like. Excuse me. And we'll finish each of those with some cold gray. And that paint is starting to dry now. So it is going to be pretty much dry on the glass when we get finished pulling these. And we will just lay that second color right on top of it. That's what I'm going to try. We'll see how it works. I've chosen yellow ochre for the second color, laying it right on top of the dried cold gray and am just putting the two pieces of glass together, being careful to up offset so I have something to pull. And now I'll take the previous printed cards and print right over that first dendritic pull that I received the isolated or standalone cold gray. Now, if I had this to do over again, I might start with the yellow ochre and then print the cold gray on top of it, but not what I did. So we are going to continue as is. This is a dark titanium white as my third color. And I'm not unhappy with how it looks. But I'm just wondering what it would look like with that yellow on the bottom.
So I have all of those pieces of cardstock printed, and now I just want to lay down some background, and I'm not getting overly fussy with, with the background. I could, but I really don't want it to be the main attention or the main focal point on this page. I just want some color there. So I'm going to put the cold gray on one side and then flip it over and just get that um, mushed together. And that pulls some paint off and creates a little interest there. And I just clean my brayer on the other page. I'm just going to add a little additional color to peek out from underneath when I'm going to glue down. This is just a, a small little gel press that I use to hold my paint, and I'm just removing that paint. And now I'm trying to decide how I want to lay this out. I think it's a little too stark over here, so I'm pulling out some gesso and just giving it, just toning it down a little bit. And once again, that mushing, putting those pages together and just kind of picking it from one page to the other. And I just scraped through that gesso while it was still slightly wet with my gel press tool, the little rubber tool with the teeth on it, to give it some dimension. Now I'm going to ink around all of these pieces of cardstock. And I have taken one of the prints. I decided to use just uh, four of them here. So I've taken one and just punched it into little circles and squares with my hole punches. Going to ink around those. And I thought for a focal color, I would use red. And I had some um, gel press prints that I had done in red in my scrap paper or my catch paper. And I just punched out some little butterflies. And I'm going to make those little red butterflies kind of float across my page. And I'm going to do the same thing with those little um, circles and squares so that they kind of start at the upper left, move down to the bottom right, and then go back up from the bottom left up to the top right on that second page. So we're creating this two-page layout. I just have glued all of that down. And I decided to put a piece of cheesecloth underneath the dendritic print on the left side. So you can see that cheesecloth is glued down underneath there. And that just added a little texture to the page and, a, and just a little more interest. I have my awl pen, my Stabilo awl. And I am just going around and giving a little bit of shadow to each of these pieces. So I'm going around all the squares, all the circles, and the um, just everything. Everything I glued down, I'm going around with the Stabilo. And then I will also take that and go around the outside edge of the page. I don't outline the butterflies. I leave the butterflies alone. And I think giving them this little black outline just helps them stand out on the page a little bit more.
And what you see me doing with my finger, I'm just getting my finger wet and then kind of pushing that black across. So there you have it. My second page layout for 2021. And I used dendritic print on both of them. So that is going to be dated. And I'll be able to go back after the year ends and see how I've improved and how I've progressed in what I have learned. So this is what I chose to do today. And you can also see the tags that I made laying there. So this is that completed layout. Again, my name is Peg and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. I will link you to the weekly prompt as well. And the making paper, which is what I use those picture frames for. So I hope you will stay and subscribe and work with me through this year. I appreciate it. Bye for now.